When I say Prattler, what quarterback do you think of first? Pratt, because you said that part first. Okay, Todd? Yeah, I probably agree with that. Okay, does that first. mean that you guys like um, Pratt more than Rattler? No. We're, we're going to break it down oh, on okay. the DMV okay. Broncos podcast. We've got Todd Davis rocking and rolling with us. We've got Henry Chisholm, mm -hmm. and we've got you here behind the camera rocking some new glasses, you hear? Maybe. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing, too. Uh, I was one of those uh, <laughs> dumbasses that looked straight into the sun yesterday when I shouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> wow, you can't do and that. I'm sure you saw nothing special, right? I, I, I saw the crescent moon, and then it hurt more you than it did. You saw it? I did. Oh, Just yeah. by looking yeah. straight up. Well, wow. You need we use sunglasses. You We really shouldn't have done it, but, you know, you look, and you have the little... It was fun. So it turns out I actually had a pair of the the eclipse glasses how um my wife had them oh, okay. um and those things are dark like you can't see anything <laughs> unless yep. you look at the sun so it makes sense that they'd have yep. to be that dark for you to look at the sun well so where i screwed up was i didn't realize why looking at an eclipse is especially bad i kind of thought it was just the same as looking at the sun because you're like you can't too. look at the yeah. sun but it turns out that it blocks enough of the light that it doesn't hurt oh. so you keep looking and all it like the UV rays eyes. are still there. Whereas if you looked at the sun, you'd be like, ow, that hurts. And you'd look away. Mm. Uh -huh. So your tolerance just goes up, but you still get hurt just as bad. So, yeah. Dang, I didn't know that. Neither did I. I wish I had known before fun, I looked at fun it. Fun science but. fact. Todd, did you enjoy the eclipse? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even look up. Did you notice like when, when we our show was done that the sky just looked a bit different color? Yeah, it was like a little like shade darker yeah, barely. or something like yeah. barely it kind of like hurt my eyes because my eyes just weren't used to that yeah um but the eclipse we'll see it again in denver in 2044 2045 or, no, the united states 2045 yes. i'm pretty sure 2044 only in montana no way i'm pretty sure no way no i'm pretty sure 2020 just or 2044. Plug, like visit montana.com or something no, don't want that uh, wow we already no montanas <laughs> don't want you to visit They're like, exactly <laughs> exactly true. no they hate you this is um, for us. uh but yeah i think 2044 only in like old part of montana 2045 wow. comes all the way through like through does it come through denver yeah it comes it does, through denver yeah. that's right the total? So it'll, it'll actually, I'm pretty sure. Wow. And it actually gets dark. We'll make sure that we're not doing the pod that day. Is that true? I might be totally wrong about and that. And the next eclipse, 2026 wow. in Iceland. So if you want to see it, you can go uh, travel wow. to Iceland. Uh, but we don't have to travel anywhere because we are in the Toyota Lounge today. And you has got something for Real us. Real quick, Jose is like really wondering if Todd was in Panama or Panama, Florida. Like, were you in the country, uh, Panama? Or were you in Panama, Florida? I was, and honestly, I'm curious, too. So. No, I was in the country, Panama. So I went I to just Panama assumed, City, yeah. Buenaventura, mm. uh, and went all the way all around, saw the canal. Nice. Uh, How was the Monkey canal? Island. The canal is actually really dope. Really? Because you okay. don't realize, really? you think they just moved water around. Yeah. No, they cut through a whole country. Yeah. That's Did wild. you know that? Like, move mountains to make it a canal. Like, <laughs> it's it was, crazy. There was no water. It was water running through there, but it was like a winding river that they fully just cut out. It's crazy. Wow. And yeah. they, had, they, like, raised the water level so yep. you can go, like, up because they ain't go all the way down. It's, it is for kind of crazy to think about. As, an, as cool. a tourist attraction, I wasn't sure if it'd be all that interesting. Though. Well, they have a big video, and Morgan Freeman is... Uh, narrating so it. So, of course, so it's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> if you want something narrated, well, Morgan Freeman's your guy. Yes, without a doubt. Without so, a you doubt. got a little city action, beach action, canal action? Yep. Wow. Monkey Island, they had like the monkeys would come on the boat and like eat out of your hand and stuff. Wow. Yeah, wow. What'd you feed the monkey? Uh, it was like bananas and nuts. Oh, uh, they love those, yeah. But that's, oh. like, that's, that's crazy, crazy thing oh, yeah. to say, but that's oh, what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Wait, so, Jose could have hooked you up in Panama? Yeah, he's in, he's in Panama. He I didn't know he was there. from Panama. Oh, I didn't know he lived you there. You were next to him. Wow. I wonder how close you got. Where, are you, uh, where do you live in Panama, Jose? You got to let us know in the chat. Yeah. Man, that, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. I had a good time. Can yeah. you see from one end to the other of the canal? Uh, like long ways? 
Not no, you can't. It's so it's too that long. long. It's it's just the part where they raise the boats. Yeah, you can see from end to end. Yeah. Um, but they've created so much. Like Monkey Island is a part of like a man-made water system that they've connected to the canal. Like it's wow. crazy. Dang. Wow. I need to put Panama on my list. Is of, it just uh, like places go to, to go? Packed with monkeys. What? Like when you look at that, and they're like, "Holy shit!" Like there's monkeys everywhere. Or is it like, "Oh yeah, there's." There's like some monkeys around. No, there's enough monkeys to where you see like some TT monkeys, which are really like small monkeys okay. that don't come on the boat. You got howler, how small. howler monkeys. Oh, I wow. think TT monkeys are probably oh, like wow. that big. <laughs> yeah. You got howler monkeys that like stay in the tree. And there's this other monkey called like the Capchi monkey, I think it's called. Yeah. And those are the ones that kind of come Ninth on the boat museum, more, yeah. more uh, Wow, you actually so. do know your monkeys. I mean, Todd knows more. <laughs> he's I just learned this. Don't back think I have like an <laughs> extensive monkey knowledge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, that is so, impressive. Yeah, yeah. That, that, they used to have that island full of monkeys at the zoo. That was pretty cool back in the day. What happened to what it? What do Zimmer do? They Zimber? put them somewhere else. Yeah, Zimber Zimber Zoo. Yeah, they put them uh, in Panama. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy that you're back, Todd. That's right. And would we be happy if the Broncos pass on the top six quarterbacks? That's Caleb Williams, <laughs> Jaden Daniels, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr., and Bo Nix, or just don't land one for whatever reason. And instead, go after a day two or day three quarterback. And I think the two most prominent ones are Spencer Rattler and Michael Pratt. Is that about right? Uh, sorry, somebody was calling me Stanky Hanky in the oh, chat. Oh, my. Yeah, well, <laughs> yes. that's, yeah, that's Wait, right. what was the right one? Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Todd. We like Thank Rattler you for paying better. attention. I got you, man. Yeah. It's crazy the low bar that we set. I'm sorry. Somebody created Hanky. an account named D4 Stanky Hanky in the gang, uh, which kind of. D four? I don't get down the D four. Is, down oh. for Stanky Yankee. In down the for Todd. You keep his hip. I don't know. Also, <laughs> he has like a fun picture, but I can't tell what the picture is. I Looks... can tell what it's Vin Diesel in a military uniform. Oh, of course. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, because when I think of Stanky Hanky, I think of Vin Diesel. Eh, I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd I have take hair. it if I were you too. Yeah. Um, because there's also, <laughs> as Strez says in the chat, there's also Jordan Travis. There's also Henry's guy, Joe Milton. And there's some other it's guys, guy. but who? Joe Milton is your guy. That's All you want to do is talk about him. No, it's a good the day RK you. comes on and says, him. he's my guy. Like, the Broncos need to draft Joe Milton. And somehow <laughs> you still say, he's my guy. I don't, Joe Milton has a crazy arm. We know you just kept talking and talking and talking about it. After the combine, he was the story of the combine. <laughs> <laughs> so I agree with you, Todd. I, it is those two guys, mm -hmm. I think. And I think there's kind of a, you can break the top six up however you want. Some people might break them up two ways or, or four different ways, but there's a clear top six. Then I think there's a, a the next two, and that's Spencer um, and Pratt, and we'll talk about who is the top of that list. And then there, in my mind, there's kind of just an others category, and maybe Jordan Tav or Jordan Travis yeah. is at the He'd top the of other that. One. But let's start with these two guys. Todd, who's your favorite among the two? Um, probably Spencer Rattler. Um I don't know if I love his game in total, but I think if you compare him to Michael Pratt, I think he's probably the better quarterback. Yep. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a fun one because obviously he was supposed to be the first, first overall pick mm -hmm. two years ago. And then he had like a bad game that they still won. They were Oklahoma. And then he had a bad half and then Caleb Williams subbed in and, and then he over. got benched. Mm -hmm. And so that was it. But I mean, he's, He's crazy talented. Like his accuracy might be the best of anybody in this draft class. Like wow. it's it's pretty close if not. Like he puts that ball right where he wants it and it's really impressive when he's on the run. Like you can tell he's polished. Like you can tell he's been at all like the the quarterback camps and all that sort of stuff cuz like the footwork is perfect. Like everything just looks so smooth. The thing is he's just a little bit chaotic. Mm -hmm. And like I I think that I think that you could draft him and he would immediately just be Sam Howell. Like, I think that you could draft him and you get the exact same thing where it's like, he's, he's athletic. He'll get out of the pocket. He'll make plays. He'll make some like weird decisions because he trusts his arm too much and turn the ball over too much. But like, there's the, the talent is very, very obvious. Yeah. And, uh, the talent is there. He was what the, one of the top recruits coming out of high school, mm -hmm. went to Oklahoma, um, with, why can't I think of the USC coach? Lincoln Riley. With Lincoln Riley, who's like, if Lincoln Riley 
if you get around Lincoln Riley, you're going to be like the number one overall pick in the draft. You look at Baker Mayfield, um, Jalen Hurts went from maybe not being drafted to a second round pick. Um, Baker Mayfield. So, I mean, he has done really good things with quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, obviously. But the interesting thing about Spencer Rattler is he's unlike all of those other quarterbacks where they end up taking off under Lincoln Riley instead. And Dre, uh, our guy Dre, was actually the one to point this out. Why? Why is that? Why was he the outlier among all of these other guys? Throwing Kyler Murray, too. Went from being a baseball draft pick to being the number one overall pick in a draft. Anything that Lincoln Riley has got around has only skyrocketed in value outside of Spencer Rattler and his inconsistency is what really scares me. Mm-hmm. And with an upside of Sam Howell, maybe maybe the upside's more, but being Sam Howell, is is that worth it? I mean, no. depends on where you draft him. <laughs> yeah. Like like if, if you stag him with a fourth round pick and say like, hey, you've got this season to convince us not to use a first round pick, I could see that. Um, but going back to Lincoln Riley thing, he was good there. Like he was, he was actually, I think, really good. Um, and then got you, benched. That, he got benched, <laughs> but he was completing seventy four point nine percent of his passes. Like he wasn't, he wasn't bad. He Where just, have we seen this before? Does this sound familiar to anybody? Quarterback ooh. numbers are all right, but then he gets ah. benched. Oh, okay, <laughs> Russell and the Wilson. Yeah. The story is he's just not that good. Yeah. I think that mm, we talk all the point. time about uh, quarterbacks, and the number one attribute is the mental. Mm-hmm. Like he has all the physical. I don't think he has the mental. I think he is a little bit chaotic yep. on and off the field, maybe. I don't know. I don't yeah. know him personally, but it feels like it's think. kind of a lot going on. He was known as being a little bit chaotic off the field. Because he was on like what the some reality show where they took like all those high school quarterbacks and he was he was the like crazy guy. Uh-huh. I can't remember who else was on it. But yeah, I mean, if he didn't have Caleb Williams behind him, he would have been he would have been a first round draft pick. Like if Caleb Williams hadn't just stolen that job, mm. because like you look at those numbers there, he went in that season, number one pick, like it, it, he could be Drake may where you're like, ah, oh, that was kind of a disappointing last season, but I think he would have gone like, even after that season, he was a Heisman favorite. Like when he goes to South Carolina or actually it was when Caleb Williams transferred from Oklahoma, he went back to being like one of the top guys for the Heisman. And I, I, and I think what happened? 12 picks. And then what happened? Uh, I mean, it's a little better. Eight picks. Eight picks, yeah. Eight picks. Like, he he hasn't been great. But, like, the talent is there. The accuracy is pretty crazy when he's running. He played behind, like, a terrible offensive line. I, I don't... I, I think that if you decide to take a quarter... Or not take a quarterback in the first round, and Rattler's there in, like, the third or fourth, there's a chance you could bring him in. Again, like, he would, he would certainly be no worse than Sam Howell is right now. So then... I just have a big question for if you think that it wasn't for Caleb Williams being behind mm-hmm. him, he would be a first round pick. Then why wouldn't you use a high second round pick on him? And let's get into that after I tell you about our friends over at Toyota. We're in the Toyota lounge right now. You guys are chiming in in the Toyota chat and we love our friends over at Toyota because they've got great products. We are big. Well, I should say Todd and I are big fans of the forerunner henry's Mm -hmm. a supra Mm -hmm. guy either way you go toyota has got the right car for you and they have so many different cars including trucks they've been in the truck game for generations they built so many different types of trucks and they've also are now in the hybrid game 16 different hybrid vehicles to choose from like the tundra iforce max hybrid and if you want to get your hands on any of these cars from suvs to rav force to the supra They've got them at your local Front Range Toyota store where there's so many locations. AutoNation, Toyota, Arapahoe, and Centennial, Corwin, Toyota, and Boulder, Groove, Toyota, and Littleton, Mountain States, Toyota, and Denver, Stevenson, Toyota, East, and Aurora, and Stevenson, Toyota, West, and Lakewood. Toyota is the official automotive partner of the NFL and the official vehicle of DNVR. Todd just sent me like the crying laughing emoji. I could see him sitting right there with just like a straight face. <laughs> wasn't I'm laughing on the inside. Yeah, sure, on the inside. Yeah. What did, what did I say? Uh, no. no, no, nothing for you. He just... Yeah, just that I need to do a bet 365 ad, but he typed 366, so I was like 365. Oh. And he did the laughing thing, and it was just, straight he was not face. laughing. Well, when, uh, when you say like LOL or haha in a text, 
How Do many I times are you well. actually laughing? Uh, <laughs> I'm usually smiling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's I don't, I don't think a text has made me laugh in a long time. It happens like once a week for me. Okay. You need to text funnier people. Maybe I need to. Maybe, maybe that's on me. So like I'll, I'll occasionally, I'll laugh at like a, a, a like a tweet. Yeah. Like I'll scroll through. Like if there's like a twist in a video that you don't like, that'll get. <laughs> it's just tough because usually you kind of know what you're getting. Like to uh, laugh out loud, yeah. it takes a lot. I uh, I guess my issue is I always send LOLs or hahas in text. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like always, so I'm never laughing. Just diffuses things. Yeah, it's yeah. true. It's it's true. Um, bet three six five is awesome. Um, and that's why we're gonna tell you about them. Let's see tonight. I was wrong, actually, about the Jet. I was not wrong. I asked on the podcast yesterday who plays tonight, and Dre said, the Nuggets play tonight. I was like, oh, the Jazz? Mm. And he was like, yeah, they actually play tonight. So Dre was Dre led me astray there. What would you say? They were Way minus 1,000? under the bus. He's, he never yeah, listens to us. minus 1,000. Minus 1,000? You know the Jazz have beaten the Nuggets 14 of the last 15 games in Utah? That's wild. And those are some pretty crazy odds. So what you're saying is you're betting on the Jazz? Um, I would never bet against the Nuggets, but I'm certainly not betting on the Nuggets tonight. Mm. And if anybody else wanted to bet against the Nuggets, I would totally understand why. Um, also, if you wind up losing that bet by like 30 points, nobody's <laughs> going to be surprised. It's a 14 and a half point spread. Ooh, yeah. I don't, the, the plus 14 and a half might be tempting. Whoa, uh, we said it was minus 1,000 yesterday. What is you it know now? what it is now? I have no idea. You think it's gone in the Nuggets' favor or against them? Um, based on that reaction, I would say it, they like they like the Nuggets more now. It's true. Minus sixteen hundred. It's crazy. Dang. What's the line for the Jazz? Plus eight hundred. He's gonna bet on the Jazz. Eight to I one odds. He's gonna bet on the Jazz. Oh, eight to one odds. Pretty crazy. Um, this would actually be a good time to use your bonus bets because you want to use those. I always think like on plus a thousand or so. Bet and get offer. You place about $5 or more. You get $150 in bonus bets. If you put all of that on the Jazz, you get 150 times 8. You get $1,200 if they win. That's kind of crazy. You can also take the first bet safety net offer if you place a bet of up to $1,000. Um, if that bet loses, you receive a match refund and bonus bets. And that's all if you use the code DNVR365. Um, whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never, never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. So if Spencer Rattler is a first-round pick without Caleb Mm -hmm. Williams, wouldn't he still be a first-round pick? Wouldn't he, uh, maybe because Caleb Williams is supposed to be this generational talent, he does get passed by him. But then Mm -hmm. he either stays at Oklahoma when Spencer Rattler goes to USC or Caleb Williams goes to USC, or he transfers to South Carolina like he did, but then looks like a first-rounder, right? Like, if he's a first-rounder, he he's a first-rounder, mm-hmm. right? Well, he's not now because he played worse after he left. So then he's not so a first-rounder. First no, he's not a first-rounder. But, like, if, if Caleb Williams didn't exist, and he, you know, whoever comes in and backs him up, plays the second half of that game, Rattler plays the rest of the season, he's going to be a first-round pick in that draft. Like, he wasn't playing badly enough to not. It's just that after that, there's just not as much, statistically and particularly, to get excited about. I mean, it's, it's the turnovers. But again, like, Sam Howell was a guy that a lot of people in Denver wanted. And if you would give up a fourth-round pick to go get Sam Howell, a fourth-round pick to go get Spencer Rattler is, at the very least, an equal move. Sure, sure. And, and I'm okay with that yeah. in, in the fourth round. Um, and I'm just I'm curious how high you would be willing to draft him and what the plan would be because to, to go through the numbers, his true or his redshirt freshman year, 28 touchdowns, seven interceptions. That's nuts for mm-hmm. being what, an 18, 19 year old playing his first ball. Then the year he was benched, 11 touchdowns, five interceptions, then he was benched. Then his two years at South Carolina, 18 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 19 touchdowns, eight interceptions. And of course, it's not all about the numbers can certainly be deceiving um but maybe these numbers actually kind of showed to be who he really is Mm -hmm. um because 18 touchdowns 12 interceptions that's like a daniel jones type of college uh stat line for you daniel jones the giants got fooled that he was a first round pick now they're like in the worst place to be they're paying him 40 million dollars a year that's not really where you want to be um so todd what's the what's the highest that you would be willing to draft spencer rattler uh maybe fifth round 
I think the odds are, like, one of these quarterbacks in the bottom half are going to be good. Like, it always happens. Somebody yeah. that we're not expecting. I just don't know if it'll be Spencer or Rattler. Yeah. I think he's had every opportunity. And I think usually those guys are in systems where they didn't have a good quarter, good coordinator or, you know, a solid O-line o- or any receivers. I think he's had all O-line those sucked, things. yeah. Um, this year at Carolina. It was bad. But he's had, he's had times even uh, before he got benched. I think he's had times where he mm-hmm. – I don't know. I just don't know if he's going to be the guy. So maybe fifth round. Mm. Mm-hmm. You said fourth. Is that the highest you would go? Oh, uh, so it depends. Like in a world where the Broncos trade back, like if they wind up, like you trade back, you get a second round pick, maybe you pick up a third round pick too. Like in that world, I wouldn't mind using one of those third round picks on it. But just how they stand right now, like a first, a third, and then you move on from there. Like I'm not, I'm not using either of those top two picks. I could, I. I could get behind a fourth, but I, it would depend on who else is on the board too. I was, but like, if there's somebody to bet on, Spencer Rattler is a good guy to bet on. Like, he's a baller. Like, he's a gamer. Like the the hits that he takes, like he'll hang in the pocket and just deliver these lasers. And he doesn't have like a crazy strong arm or anything. But I don't know. Like, I, I would not be surprised if he turns out to be a good quarterback. Which is why fourth round. Uh, if he's on the board in the fourth round, I would, I think I'd just take him. Yeah, and I was actually going to say something exactly what you said. I wouldn't use the first two picks on him. Yeah. Um, so if you do trade back at a second rounder, then you can use that third rounder. But, man, to because if you use your second pick in the draft, which would be that third round pick that you have right now, he's not just a flyer. Then he's like kind of your plan. Uh, and I don't really like kind of your plan at quarterback. You can mm-hmm. take a guy in day three and just have him as a gamble. Let's hope he's Brock Purdy. Let's hope he's one of these unique situations. But a third round pick, that really gives me the type of commitment that the Broncos have with Drew Locke with the second round pick. But remember, the Broncos passed up on drafting Drew like four different times before actually drafting him. And to me, it's like, if you're going to use a day two pick on a guy at quarterback, that sends so many mixed messages. Like, you like him, but you don't love him. As George and Sean said, if they love a guy, they're going to do whatever they can to go get him. If you, if you just are lukewarm on a guy, then just wait to see if they fall until day three. Because if you're lukewarm on a quarterback, then you can pass on him, and that's okay. But like, like Henry said, that there is talent there. Mm-hmm. That's why I think he is going to be the first quarterback off the board because teams just go crazy for talent. Um, but it's not like he's 6'5", 230 pounds. He is six foot. Um, so it's not like <laughs> physically talented. He's just oozing. Um, he has a good arm, um, maybe not an elite arm. Um, and the crazy thing is when we look at Michael Pratt, he might like be the complete opposite of Spencer Rattler. What do you see from Michael Pratt, Todd? <laughs> um, Man, I threw you an alley-oop, and you just uh, you just made me look foolish. You no, I thought you, you, I thought you were going to go into like how he was different. You didn't jump, and the ball just went straight out of bounds, and I look like the idiot. Do you? Uh, <laughs> who's the last two-lane quarterback to be successful? I have no idea. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think he's, he's another person that's going to need some work. I don't think he... He's as physically gifted as Spencer mm-hmm. Rattler, but maybe he's more of a mathematician. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, the deep ball is what you really like. I think that's what stands out. The number, I was a little surprised. Like, you go through and watch it all, and you know what people say about him. And I was expecting, like, Bailey Zappy type of numbers where he's throwing for 5,000 yards. That was not really the case. And they're just, to me, he doesn't really make many NFL throws. There's a lot of, like, this crosser comes wide open and he doesn't like lead him to the sideline. He throws it like two steps behind him and he has to like stop and wait there and grab it. Um, a lot of those deep balls, like there's some that are right on the money. There are a bunch that are underthrown and like his receivers were just able to out muscle the corners. Like you look at some of the, the picks that like Spencer Rattler throws and you think, well, if, those guys that Tulane were playing were these guys, they might be making these exact same plays, but they're never getting their head around. Like they're lost. Like there's, they're throwing into like these, he's throwing into tight windows and the receivers aren't really getting hit because of it. It just feels like a little bit different game. And that's what scares me. Um, But yeah, I, I thought there'd be more like 
anticipation, or like throwing guys open and that sort of stuff. But it, yeah, but it, it I, I, I just wasn't super impressed. It's the deep ball that you like. And if you like the deep ball, then you think you can coach the rest up. And if you coach the rest up, then you might have like, you hope that you're getting like a Kirk Cousins or something. But that seems, uh, I'm, I'm not sold. When you say like you like the deep ball, but you have to coach everything else up, who does that remind you of? Been, Drake May? Yep. Our guy? I was going to say Russell Wilson. Oh. oh. And yeah. uh, we know what Sean thought of that. Sean wants a lot more than just a deep ball. But I think that's the biggest mm-hmm. thing is, uh, and one of the, the biggest differences be to, and what made, makes Spencer Rattler and Michael Pratt like complete opposites is Spencer Rattler was the ultra-talented guy coming out of high school, peaked his freshman year, and then kind of went downhill and didn't, didn't continue to progress through college. Whereas Michael Pratt, the opposite, obviously mm-hmm. not a, a, highly, uh, a high recruit going to Tulane. And then he just kind of got better slightly every single year. Like mm-hmm. pretty much every year he threw for like 22 touchdowns, eight interceptions, but his completion percentage continued to get better. So it was like, man, you like to see the progress from this guy, but you kind of wonder if he's maxed out at where he mm-hmm. is because of the way he plays. And it's Henry, it's the anticipation that you that you mentioned he's throwing to wide open guys mm-hmm. at Tulane it's not like he is having that anticipation uh those throws over the middle of the field and that's just something man when i look at him i just think too much of russell wilson and mm. too much specifically of the plays you broke down todd where there's a jerry's about to come open mm-hmm. and if russ throws it with anticipation like you need to to succeed in the nfl specifically in the middle of the field in that intermediate spot um, that Russ would have been a great quarterback mm-hmm. for Sean Payton, but he wasn't able to do that consistently, and we haven't seen it consistently from Michael Pratt, and so I don't just I don't see him being a Sean Payton guy. I don't see Sean looking at him saying, "Man, yeah, he can run my offense and win in the middle of the field." Yeah, I don't think so either. And then he doesn't have the same I think physical abilities yeah. with his legs. Like if he's lacking mm-hmm. throwing the ball in anticipation, then you really have to be good on the ground. So um, I don't think it's a win-win for the Denver Broncos. Um, but like I said, it's, it's funny because at some point, one of these guys are going to be good, whether it's Travis yep. or Rattler or any one of the bottom six quarterbacks, mm-hmm. somebody's going to be pretty good. Yeah. And the thing, like, I've kind of gotten to the point where I just want to see him draft a quarterback in the first round. I didn't feel that way like two, three months ago, though. Two or three months ago, I was thinking you just go draft like a good player and figure out quarterback later. And I think it's mostly just. I don't want to sit through them not drafting a quarterback. That is the reason why I want them to, but it, it might be smart just to take a chance on like any, any one of these guys and say, Hey, you can, there's a chance that you could actually be the starter right away. I'm not so sure if that's the case with Pratt, but with Rattler and potentially even Jordan Travis too, like maybe uh. you could throw them in there right away. And if it works great, if not, like maybe you got a little bit of an upgrade over Stidham, like, you can just draft a guy next year. It's not that big of a deal to replace him. Well, so many big questions that you just threw out there. Would either of these guys be able to compete for the starting job this year? What about Jordan Travis? And uh, let's get into that. I do have an answer for you, Todd, about wow. the best two-lane quarterback Uh-oh. to come out. Two-time Super Bowl winning champion quarterback. Super Bowl winning champion? Damn. Now, um, I should say two-time on the he's, team, he's Wait. won two Super Bowls. Was he the quarterback? <laughs> he has that rings. Was, <laughs> he has that was throwing the ball in the Super Bowl. Was he? He wasn't holding nah. the trophy. He, he, he has had the two rings. rings. I'll you let go. you. I'll let um, you think about it and think close <laughs> to home too. Um, after I tell you about our friends over at Red Hawk Roofing, where we had hail last week for like 15 minutes after our show was over, we just got like a random hailstorm. It was wild, and I'm happy that my roof was taken care of, so I didn't have anything to worry about. But if your roof needs some help, check out our friends over at Red Hawk Roofing, where they have quality materials, decades of experience, quick response time, Colorado's best estimators and contractors, and they have free, no-obligation roof and property inspections, as well as free, in-depth photo reports for all of their inspections. So don't wait with hail season really ramping up soon you want to make sure your roof is taken care of and the best thing about them and the cherry on top is they are huge dnvr supporters which means you know that you can trust them we put our stamp of approval on them so check them out over at redhawkroofing.com and make sure to tell them dnvr sent you a shout out to our friends and family now over at breck brew 
Uh, we mm-hmm. did our show yesterday from their brewery, and it was fantastic. Um, they even gave us a couple of beers for free um, at the little blackout, but it was phenomenal. <laughs> uh, and we had a great time. Did the beers lead to the blackout, or did the blackout lead to the beers? It's actually the other way around. Yeah, for once. yeah. 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 that is strange, isn't it? It's very different, very <laughs> different. But you go ahead and check them out. They have a lot of great beers for you to try, whether it's the Avalanche Amber Ale, the Broncos Country Pale Ale, which we always keep on set, the Fun Slinger, the Strawberry Sky. I mean, they have so many great flavors. You can check out breckbrew.com to find their beer locator to find the brew near you. Do you guys have any idea? Uh, uh, who like that quarterback Bobby is? Bobby Brister. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Brister. Because I was just thinking like who the Broncos backup quarterback was. That? Yeah. He was the Broncos backup when they won the first two Super Bowls. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, with a name like Bobby Brister, it has to be. Yep. Bubby? Yeah. Bubby. Down Not in Bobby, Bubby. Yeah. Bubby. No, Bubby yeah. Bristol. No. Yeah. No, that, that was a He went a to Tulane. He actually okay. Bubby. Uh. He got beat out by John English eventually and transferred to Northeast Louisiana. So that kind of answers your uh, your question perfectly, oh. Todd, about, yeah, no successful Tulane quarterbacks, really. Yeah. Northeast they Louisiana. Corners. They got good corners, though. Louisiana, Louisiana has pretty good corners. That's yeah. true. Uh-huh. That's very yeah. true. Oh, you played with some of them. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Who was... Uh, Oh my gosh. Torian Nixon. Yep. T Nix. And uh Oh shit, what was the other guy's name? I can remember his face. I hate this game though. <laughs> Who was the guy that just had so many interceptions in training camp? Was it him? No, it wasn't T Nix. Oh um, he was lighter skin, longer arms. I'm blanking right now. Okay. It sucks. <laughs> okay. What is it? That's the thing though. You've had like you know a thousand teammates. Like. Yeah, I've had a lot of teammates. Yeah. yeah. Um I don't know how to oh, take Oh, what was his name? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in the chat's going to have it. <laughs> um, okay, so, Henry, you threw out some interesting questions, um, and I don't remember what they were. What were they? They were so um, interesting, I can't remember. Them. Oh, could you start him right away? Yeah, yeah, Lorenzo yeah. Dawson. He, yeah, he, right. he, he was the big six right. guy yeah, he was a, in he training camp. Uh, Yes, yeah. that's exactly it. I'll, I'm happy remembering one of them. He um, like tormented Mark Sanchez in training camp. <laughs> what an era! That's, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy to think about. Um, yeah, I was so fired up about them. Also, like Jamal Carter. I can't remember why he just came up, but that JC. was about that same oh, time. Man, that's Miami though. That is Miami. Yeah. yeah, but that was like that same era with those DBs. Where I was like, oh, they could have something here. Damn, mm. you like know all your teammates' colleges too. Yeah, strange enough, I guess I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jamal huh. Carter was a monster. Yeah, he, he was, was huge. <laughs> he was a yeah. That yeah. was crazy. Um, okay, I remember the interesting question that you brought up. Would okay. either of these guys compete with um, if it's just Stidham for the starting job this year? Yeah, I think they could do that. Yeah, I think they would benefit best uh, sitting under a good quarterback for a year. But I think. No disrespect to Stidham, but yeah. I think that they could compete with him uh, right out the gate. I 100% agree. It's tough. Rattler definitely could because Rattler is like a – he just makes things happen. Like if he doesn't have the offense totally down and has some like mental lapses or whatever, he's going to bail himself out of it enough that you're not just going to totally break it. Um, I think Pratt is tough because he actually plays in a kind of a more pro-style offense, which you would think would help. But it also means that when you plug him in, you kind of want to put him in a pro style offense, and that might be just putting a little bit too much on his plate. And you, I mean, a couple games of going like nine for thirties on the table. Like, there's a chance that he's just not ready for that. Um, and that's why I give that. If these two were to compete, I'd say Rattler would definitely beat him. But Pratt could beat out Stidham. There's a chance. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I think they both could, but I actually think that Spencer Rattler might do that. And then, if you're getting a starting quarterback with the day three pick. Sure, and and with a guy that has probably a little more upside than Stidham, yeah, it, it's a good pick. But again, I just don't really like that day two. Uh, but you mentioned that Jordan Travis might be in that conversation too. Yeah, no, I think he's right there with Pratt and Ra- I. Th- I mean, I think it's Rattler here, then Pratt and Travis in whatever order you want. Mm. Um, Travis is. First of all, he's a lot of fun. Well, I, the big thing is that offense was just crazy. Like I think that. 10 years from now, we're going to look back at that Florida State offense and be like, holy shit, they had Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman and uh, Trey Benson and Jaheim Bell and like all those dudes right there. And you're just like, how did we not appreciate at the time that this was happening? You have to remember, like, that was an undefeated football team, too. Yeah, they were Um, So, going back and watching Jordan Travis, 
I think it's a lot of fun, but it's mostly be it's mostly fun because of those receivers. Yeah. Where it's like, holy shit, how did he catch that? How did like it's over and over and over again. You gotta give Jordan Travis credit for putting the ball out there, Absolutely. but it's it's a lot of jump balls. And like if if the Broncos are saying like, hey, we're we're not really trying to get our quarterback this year. Let's take the lottery ticket um and, and just see what happens and probably get one next year. The game plan might be like just go get Cortland Sutton 1,300 yards, and that's our that's like the focal point of our offense. J- Jordan Travis can do that. Like if it's throw up a bunch of balls for Jordan or for Cortland Sutton, that is exactly where he excels. He can throw it to him over and over and over again. Like he's a good enough athlete to make plays out of the pocket. The stuff over the middle, like the quick throws, like the the footwork, that sort of stuff, just isn't really there. But he's a playmaker. Like he's a baller in a similar way to Spencer Rattler. Um, not doesn't quite have the arm and, or he doesn't have the arm, but he is somebody who like could go grind out some. It, it might feel kind of Tebowy. It wouldn't look like the, the exact same as Tebow, where you're just not completing passes. But you're just like, oh, he's he's getting the job done. He's doing enough, and they're they're pulling out some wins, twenty to seventeen. Man, it, it's really good points. He's a good decision maker. Last year, before he got hurt, twenty touchdowns, mm-hmm. two interceptions. I think the year before, like twenty five touchdowns, five mm-hmm. interceptions. So that's my favorite thing about him. But everything else. I feel like you just want a little bit more from him. And then the biggest thing, too, is I think if you draft him, he might be a really good Kirk Cousins type of quarterback where he's the second quarterback you take in a draft Mm -hmm. because you just have long-term plans for him. And a big reason for that is uh, his injury that he just had. You mentioned his athleticism. Mm -hmm. That really helped him out, and and it it really helped him out throughout Mm -hmm. uh, these past couple seasons. But now he's coming off the brutal season-ending injury that he had last year he's not going to be your your 1a option or your 1b option or even your two option this year he probably needs a full year to get his legs back under him to get back into football shape and so that's why i just see him really being if you want to take a flyer with him with one of your three fifth or sixth round picks sure i'm okay with that but he's not the guy that you're going to take and hope that maybe he can do something this year I actually am kind of optimistic about him yeah. uh, as a player, and I think he can actually um, be pretty good. I think his draft stock got hurt by him getting hurt. Yeah. I think had they been able to finish out the season, make the college playoffs, he'd definitely be probably higher than Rattler and Pratt. Yeah. Um, so I mean, they would have gotten in. Yeah. Which is crazy That's to think true. about. Like, yeah. there's an alternate reality where it's McCarthy, Travis, and Penix all competing there. Exactly. So it would have been a lot of fun. So I think I think he's talented. Um, and I think that he has all the tools that he needs. He has to sharpen them for sure. But I think he can, he has a lot of upside with him as well. Mm-hmm. And you never know. I mean, he could come back from a season in, in season ending injury and run four, four, six, like somebody did, but, um, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah. And he's supposed to be back by training camp. So he'll be, he'll be healthy enough to compete. Like, like, I don't know about all that. He may need more time. Because if he you, just gets yeah. back, I don't know if he'll be That's himself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? For a rookie, like after missing all of this year, being mm-hmm. able to to lift weights, I I just think it would be smart. Like like what uh, he gives me uh, Hendon Hooker vibes mm-hmm. um, of mm-hmm. kind of how the the Lions dealt with him. And I think man, going to a similar situation, yeah. Hendon Hooker's in a great situation because and and I think it's a great situation for the Lions too. They have Jared Goff there. There is no pressure on Hendon Hooker, and they can evaluate Hendon Hooker. I think they used a third or a fourth round pick on Hendon yeah. Hooker, and if he turns out to be that potential first round pick that he was before he got hurt, yep. man, they're in such a great spot. And if he doesn't work out, well, they just got themselves a backup quarterback with a third or fourth round pick. That's okay. And they weren't desperate to need a quarterback mm-hmm. because they had Jared Goff. So <laughs> I think that would probably be a great place for Jordan Travis or the Broncos draft Michael Penix Jr., a guy that bounced back ran a four five four 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 six I think. four four six four four six maybe you draft him he's your plan a and then you just get some insurance in the sixth round or or fifth round with with jordan travis i would like that combo that would be good i think it would work mm-hmm. out we'll that'd be, i mean happens you don't have a lot of draft picks that'd eight. be using two on quarterback would be you have a eight. lot that's plenty that is true you that's do have lot. eight you just, it, after they you trade just, up in the first yeah. round they'll have like four but Oh, boy. Then yeah. you won't be using two. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Travis. I also think, though, like, if Hendon Hooker was a Bronco last year, he would have seen the field, I bet. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. But that was his second year. 
I don't think it was. That was his first year. I think that I think he was a rookie wow. last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's interesting. Is there anyone else you want to throw in here? A Joe Milton. Those are the good ones. Okay. <laughs> Those are the quarterbacks who are good. <laughs> After that, the quarterbacks like all have some serious flaws. Because okay. we're talking about like uh, Tua's brother. Um, we're talking about Sam Hartman. We're talking yeah. about Joe Milton. We're talking about Austin Reed. Can you tell me what school Austin Reed went to? Uh. <laughs> uh, no, I cannot. Can you tell me? Western Kentucky? Yeah, I wouldn't be yeah. able to tell there you either. You Western Kentucky. Um, so th- those are the quarterbacks we're talking about. Joe Milton, probably going to get drafted because of his arm. Um, the other guys, maybe in the seventh round is when you're talking about. But let's rank these guys. Let's get into our Bet365 top five after i tell you about premier members credit union where there's a lot of financial institutions out there but premier members credit union separates themselves because they're not a bank which means they do things differently they put their members first with higher savings interest and lower loan rates it's an organization that serves the community and they are part of Colorado's community in particular. With Premier Members Credit Union, they're gonna give you an option to earn 5% APY on your first $2,000 with reverse tier money market. Um, Whether your goals, whatever your goals are, they can help you. So check them out over at Premier Members Credit Union. And when you become a member, you'll get $200. All you have to do is open a checking account and sign up for e-statements. It's that easy for them to get, hand you $200. This is going to be your best money move yet. So head to premier, becomepremier.com to find out more. And shout out to us, DMVR. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of events here. And we have some great ones coming up. Specifically for the Avs, uh, you can join the DMVR Avalanche crew Sunday, April 14th for our very first watch party with Lavello Construction, a pal partner of ours, and our friends at Coors. Uh, we will have a ticket giveaway courtesy of our friends at Coors Light for the 4-18 game, which is April 14th game against the Oilers. The Avs crew will also be around to cheer on DU hockey team playing in the Frozen Four semis on Thursday at 3 p.m. at the DMVR bar. Uh, we have our first golf tourney set for this year. So I want to be a part of this. I wasn't last year. And I had to find time to get my golf game up, but we'll <laughs> talk about that later. Uh, you can join the DMVR crew for the Scramble. Scramble de Mayo, May 3rd at City Park. Then our crew will head over to DMVR bar for lunch, drinks, and prizes. Head to thednvr.com to purchase tickets, sponsor holes. Whoa. Uh, stay <laughs> up to date on all events by visiting thednvr.com. And you can follow, follow us on social at dnvr underscore sports. You know what holds the most expensive, Todd? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> 18, I'd have to imagine. Yeah, it could be. It's the last one. It's the most important one. Or the first one, because you could probably see it from the clubhouse. That's true. Yeah. You're driving by it all so morning. Can, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, more Man, eyeballs. we got a lot of events coming yeah. up. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, let's get this thing back on track. My <laughs> mind went so left with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it after the show. Okay, we'll talk after, yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> oh. Let's get into our Bet365 <laughs> top five, what do we want to call this, non-first-round quarterbacks? Non- non- Top six quarterbacks. That is tough to phrase. Do you think? Do you think uh, Michael Penix? Do you think Michael Penix and Bo Nix will be drafted in the first round? I think one will. Don't know which one, but I would imagine one. One does. One doesn't. Would be my bet. That's probably how it's going to shake out. Yeah. So we're just talking the non-six. <laughs> still laughing over quarterbacks <laughs> here. <laughs> 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 I don't know what happened. <laughs> Sitting on a feather or something. How good of a quarterback do you think Brock Bowers would be? Because that's who uh, oh, that's wow. who you here has on here. <laughs> Thanks, you. I mean, I guess he's not a first round QB. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good point. <laughs> that's a, that's, that is true. Can't argue with that. Technically, you're right. Um, yeah. The intentions were good None. here. I understand where the confusion was. How do we phrase well, this? Well, if you said like next tier quarterbacks, or something, like keep it kind of vague because I don't think there's a specific way to define it. That's a good one. Top five 
next tier quest. I don't even know if that's I don't know. That's great. It's not great. It. Who but knows? But you guys know what we I'm can talking talk about. Top, top five show. worst quarterbacks. In the <laughs> <game>. <laughs> yeah, that's top no, five, bag, that's top five yeah. bad quarterbacks. Yeah, top five. Top five, top five bad, bad quarterbacks. quarterbacks. Oh man, the Broncos are gonna end up with like Best two of these bad. guys. I know, and, this, and then this we're gonna show up and Jordan Travis is gonna be like, "So you were the guys who called me a bad quarterback." You were. You said you were top five though. Top five. Yeah. Worst quarterbacks. Um. Okay. So I think. Pretty much across the board, Spencer Rattler's number one. Yep. Yeah, probably. Would you guys be happy if the Broncos landed him? No, I wouldn't be happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would try and trust the process mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and what Sean saw, but I wouldn't be, like, happy about it. I agree. Uh, if, I mean, it, if he's your the only quarterback that you come out of the draft with, I'm not inspired. Mm-hmm. If you're really trying to build this team smartly, you probably don't draft a quarterback in the first round this year. But I don't think I would build it smartly. I think I'd just draft one and see what happens. Um, so I could get behind it, especially if you get Rattler. Yeah, if you use that third round pick and it's your the second pick you take, that would kind of sting. But yeah, I, I could I could get excited about it. Does John Elway unretire his number to give it to Spencer Rattler? Heck no. <laughs> wow. Heck no. He wore wow. seven at Oklahoma. He wore seven at South Carolina. Like I think I think maybe Patrick Mahomes and <laughs> Jesus Christ are probably uh, people. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. John Elway retired. That That's what I was thinking. It's like if Caleb Williams, like if you were taking the number one overall pick and it's Caleb Williams and he wore number seven, I still don't think Elway does it. No. No. I don't think he would have gave it to Peyton Manning. Wow. That's I a great question. Uh, the thing is, the <laughs> thing is, uh, uh, Elway, Elway was the one who had to convince it. Like, like if Peyton was like, all right, I'm going somewhere else. I didn't get the number. Could you you think Elway folds? Yes. <laughs> He's like, oh, then oh, it didn't work out. I, I'll, I'll, I, tell you, I trust you on this Could one. you imagine if that's what it came down to? Came down to a number. <laughs> wow. And it's then ESPN else. writes like the expose like five years later. Yep. It's yep. like, oh, Peyton Manning, instead of winning those Super Bowls with the Titans, could have yep. been... Could have been winning Super Bowls with the Broncos, but John Elway <laughs> yeah. wouldn't give him the number. <laughs> Man, it's also, that's wild. Uh, somebody said that we should call it best of the rest. Best of the rest. Not that's bad. it. That's it. That's a much easier, nicer way to put it. Yep. Um, so shout out to our guy Zuriel for putting that. Um, Power also, says an outside shot of being better than Stidham. Oh, that's my a funny goodness. comment. I disagree. Speaking but. of Tebow, that's what that offense would look like. Yeah, that would be actual Tebow. Yeah, it Except would. Except maybe with a little bit better passing game. Shout out to Frank Trapuca, too, for giving up, for unretiring his True. 18 or his family. I think his family. Yeah, yeah. his family. Yeah. Yeah. So. And now Peyton's no longer a footnote, which is nice. Also, that reminds me. You remember when I slandered Miles a little bit? Oh, were yeah. You, you were here for that? Yeah, it wasn't yeah. just a little okay. bit. It was a lot. The video they put out, like teasing the jersey reveal, pretty good. No, it's they're so. I like. I. I so cheesy. I'm not, I'm not saying it was a ten out of ten. Pretty good. It's hat tip so to Miles on cheesy. that one. When, when he's in the robe yeah, and he reaches yeah. up and they blur it out. And they blur it out. You have to you imagine like what's going on. Now. <laughs> but I mean, that he it wasn't blurred out. That's that's like, what. Dang. I'm talking about. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was just waiting. Um, yeah, but oh, no. <laughs> Miles would be. I mean, he's, oh, a, yeah. he's a, don't even start. <laughs> <laughs> he's a horse, man. <laughs> There's a saying this about it. Shut up, Um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, it was it was a funny bit. That's a, that's a tweet that made me laugh. When they when I saw a boy, I was like, uh, you know, it was like an actual little little bit audible little laugh, <laughs> just because the shock value. You know, that's what you need to make you laugh. So uh, Spence or is Michael Pratt number two? I could go either way with him and Travis. I'll probably I think say Jordan Travis. All Let's right, go. wow. Let's the, go. The group was going Jordan Travis. I like that. Um, I think Pratt's probably got to be next though. I would think so too. I mean, who else is competing at this point? It's uh, Sam Hartman. Mm-hmm. Um, best hair. If we did best oh. hair, then he would oh, be. Oh, my uh, goodness. That's top. very true. If but. this was like hairball or something instead of football. <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost like a fashion show or something, a you know? Hairball? If, well, if it was like, if it would show up and whichever team has the best hair just wins. You think that's Sean Payton's system? Remember, he did say... No. Other teams aren't good at evaluating quarterbacks. No. I, I, Sam Hartman has some Sean Payton-y things. Like, if he's trying to find a stopgap, he can do all the little baby stuff underneath. and Like, he just can't get the ball at the sideline, you know? Kind of an important quality in the NFL. I think yeah. so. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, 
It was a big blur. Um, I think uh, who would I have? I think I think Milton would be my four or five, probably the five, and I think I'd go uh, Devin Leary. Sneaky has gotten a little hype at various times. I mean, Hartman's probably not a bad one to put. I think Hartman then Milton would be my four and five. You're back on the roster, or whatever. Hank, I trust you here. Sure. Do you think all these guys get drafted? Yeah. Hartman, Hartman's the one you don't really know about. But you would imagine yes. It's just like if, you know, we've had like the Reed guy. There's there, there's like a few others there in that. Like Keaton Slovis somehow ran like a 4-5-5 five, five or something that nobody expected. He's another one, though, where like he literally cannot get the ball to the sideline. So do you can you even touch him or can you just say like backup quarterback good enough yeah but there we go so our four is joe milton because he's got a massive arm um <laughs> and they had to take the pro day outside that was yeah it's good marketing it is and Girl, it also, if you get if you get rk down here he'll he'll tell you everything you want to hear about joe milton <laughs> uh, that's a real milton man around here oh the milton man that's a nice yeah. little nickname who knows there's a world in which we all become milton men he's another number seven though right I think so, yeah. Well, also, he's, actually, he's the third, isn't he? Joe Milton the third? True. Um, just for reference, Joe Milton threw 11 interceptions over his six years in college. Josh Allen threw 15 in one year in college. That is wild. Like, if, if you like the whole Josh Allen thing, you will love Joe Milton in mm. the fourth round. Yeah, I mean, big cannon of an arm yep. yeah no you're right you can see the similarities there all right there's our bet 365 top five let's hop in to the comment section and of course i gotta give a shout out to our friends over at raisin canes where our draft coverage is brought to you by raisin canes where you gotta get their chicken fingers it is yeah. the best download their app you can order on the app one love raisin canes and before we actually get into the comment section it's our final March Madness um, head-to-head. We are in the championship round, and yesterday we broke down the second semifinal, and we let the people vote. It was an interesting one. We had Drake May going up against J.J. McCarthy with over 1,500 votes. Who do you think the people chose as the most ideal draft pick for the Broncos between J.J. McCarthy and Drake May? I'm just going to lean towards all the other uh, speculations right now and the kind of trend that's been going on, and probably, they probably say J.J. McCarthy. Okay. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going Drake May. I think the fact that he was seen as, like, the number two quarterback going into the year, I think the people who watch and listen to us every day, not casuals, some of the Twitter followers, maybe some casuals who hear the name Drake May, and they're like, oh, of course. They haven't been up to date on everything. Mm. So you said they're slow. Yeah, yeah, not not the people who are tuned in with us. Every Just day, the people that are rocking and rolling on our Twitter, though. You're calling. I mean, them. like what? I mean, how many followers we have? A lot. Yeah, over exactly. Two million to so like, there's probably like a more couple thousand you. casuals in there. Certainly more than me. <laughs> but then also, the way Twitter works is like it's a Broncos tweet, so all the random Broncos fans. Like it's not like Facebook Bronco fans, but. I th- I think the casuals are kind of the tiebreaker in what here. What are you saying about Facebook Broncos fans? Well, I'm sure. I mean, all these people are here with us, so we can say whatever we want because these people know. I'll clip this and put it up on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Cool. Put it on Facebook. Make sure they all know this. <laughs> they're trying to. They're trying to get Peyton out of retirement over there. They're, they're still. They're still trying to get Tim Tebow back. No, John Elway's still the GM. That's yeah. that's right. They're still pissed yeah, off at that's the big one. John Elway for for cutting Justin Simmons. <laughs> um, <laughs> if they've even heard that happen. Todd, I voted for JJ McCarthy. Oh, you did. So. But I was wrong. Mm. Drake May mm. won with 54% of the vote. This was one of the closer ones we had, which sets up our final of Bo Nix going against Drake May. Let's say inside the Broncos draft room, they're on the clock, and Bo Nix and Drake May are there, and they have to choose between these two. If you know it's between these two, how do you feel? Do you feel good? <laughs> <laughs> or do you feel like, man, these are the ideal picks? I feel okay. I'm curious to why Drake May fell so far. And that'll have me thinking. But ultimately, I think it's a pretty easy decision. I think that Drake May would still be the best choice at that point. So I think I'm okay. I think I'm like, you know, let's see what he can do and hopeful for the best. I think okay, hopeful um, are good words there. Yeah. Because it's, it's not ideal, but... 
Yeah, you have two quarterback options, one that was viewed as the number two quarterback for a mm -hmm. long time in this draft. Yeah, I think I think you're okay with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, th I think you're happy. I wouldn't be over the moon, but, but I'd be happy with it. Yeah. So then who are you taking, Henry? <sighs> I would go... I'll go J.J. McCarthy. Just the Drake May... I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> Does this guy listen to sorry, our show? He's, sorry. Oh, he's been asleep the whole idiot. podcast. I know. I know. He's just thinking about Miles right now. No, I'm not thinking about Miles. Um, no, he's thinking about the blur on Miles. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot that he lost. Um, that, that was yesterday's conversation. Do you think on the mascot they have, like, you know, all features? No. No. No, I thought about last night. They definitely don't. You did think about it last <laughs> night. I mean, there's no way that you could do that, obviously. So you thought you were thinking about it last night? <laughs> Well, I mean, you said you, you were. Well, <laughs> so it, this clearly shows it, you thought it, no, it's, about what was going on. It's just like in, it's an instantaneous thing where it's like, well, I'm, oh look, they blurted out like he has a, you know, and, and of course like, he doesn't. And then for a second you're like, you, you wait, he, about, you for a second you're just like, oh, he doesn't though, right? And you're like, no, he definitely doesn't. Because because what do you gain? It's just one thing that you have to cover up, you know. It's like, because you're never going to show that to anybody. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, see, you would like that. There, there we go. Uh, Miles being arrested for indecent exposure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to see your search history, Henry. At all. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's all, we could read through it if you want. You would love uh -oh. it. I guess it's a lot of football stuff today. It's so you're taking J.J. Right. McCarthy. Your opinion is uh, off the board right now. Yeah, that's fair. Todd? His, I just go back to his search history. He's probably like all miles, and then like half of it's like, our shower is really necessary. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, Lexi did take a shower on Sunday. Oh, okay, no, no, yeah. you already told her she doesn't take yeah. a shower. No, yeah. you no. already said that. No, oh, she, did she, she listen? She, I the, know she the was thing pissed. Is, I got back the to thing her. is, I I got a text from her multiple hours after, oh. which almost makes me think because she wasn't watching live, right? So she must have heard from somebody. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't dig in too deep. I was just told very clearly that she did take a shower and that I must not be all that observant. Mm. Oh, I can. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah. can confirm that after about the past three minutes. Yeah. Um, mm -mm -mm. No, that's, that's even fair. worse for you then. That she didn't. That she did shower, and then you oh, yeah. blasted her oh, yeah, on no, air terrible. saying that she didn't, and then you didn't take a shower. No, I didn't take a shower. That I mean, I took two showers yesterday. I've already taken one today. Oh, he yeah. was kidding. That's all. That's From all you right. said you didn't you even were, take. Yeah, you were like anti shower, and I was taking two a day. <laughs> and then he was giving you crap no, for, no, no, for no, taking two showers yeah. a day. No, 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 and then no, you have to like explain to him why. Exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. It just depends on your schedule. Like, I, I'm not anti shower. I just think if you're not doing anything all day, if you're sitting at home, like you might not need to take a shower. Yesterday, what happened was I didn't take a shower the day before, so I certainly was going to take a shower before we did the mm. podcast. I went to the gym after, and what am I going to do? Be all sweaty? No, you take a shower then. Like, you take a shower when there's a reason to take a shower, which is either you, you smell bad. You just don't have reasons. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of reasons. So today is nuts. Today is... Oh, no. It's not going to happen. No way. I, I took one this morning before... after the, I went to the gym this morning. I'm, I'm thinking I might go to the gym again today. Was that a ch because you don't believe I went to the gym? I called. No, I went BS. to the gym. I went back through some Jordan Travis, and I had myself a nice time. I didn't sweat as much as I thought I would because I was a little too focused on my phone, but it, we're working through that. This is the guy who says he wakes up at, like, you know, 8 is waking up way too early. Yep. We think he did all this this morning? I had an alarm at 8. I wish, I wish you could see previous alarms. Um, did I send any tweets or texts? I didn't send mm, any tweets or texts. There's no evidence. Um, Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So if you're not taking J.J. McCarthy. Oh. Because Todd's uh, taking give me, Drake May. Exactly. Do I take <laughs> Ra? <laughs> give me Drake May. I really hate it, but I'll just do it. Um, I think, like, the talent is obvious. If you can get that talent at 12, you just... I'm still at the point you pull the trigger. I think you sim for a year because I'm not really sure what exactly he does well enough to put him on an NFL field right away. And that is not the flaw that I want from my rookie quarterback because I don't think he's enough of a runner to be like, yeah, we're just going to run a bunch of read options and that's going to go well. Like he hits the deep balls, but I don't think he hits enough of the underneath stuff. Um, he's like, we talked last week, like Bo Nix, if you want him to run like all simple stuff, he's proven he can do it. I'm not too impressed by that because I'd imagine any one of these guys could do that. Drake May, he'll spike a slant. If you run a bunch of slants, he'll spike a slant every single game. 
And that's something that'll drive me crazy, but you just hope he grows. I'm, I'll take Drake May over Brock Bowers. <laughs> what did, did you I just do? hear what he it's said just, again? It's just going on. Oh my what did goodness. I do? Are we on the other semifinal? You said Drake oh May over Brock gosh. Bowers. I thought, I thought we're, we're not on the semifinal we're on anymore. The yeah. It's yes. Drake May and Brock Bowers. No. No, it's what not. Is it not? Oh what my is gosh. It? Wait, JJ McCarthy. No, Drake May won. We did this. I was right. What? I, this I don't know. Is. What, did I, just, what did I get wrong? This is this is Who won the battle between Drake May and the other battle? Bonix, yes. tur- as it would turn out. Yes. I forgot. Oh. I, I was thinking the B. I was just, I Adios heard the B and I read. Mio. Oh yeah. my goodness. Oh, Bonix, Bonix sucks. This is wild. He, should, he heard shower and started panicking. He didn't know what was going <laughs> It's so shower. true. The shower got him on the fridge. It's shower and my blurred and he's just it's like, what? Landslide. There you go. Dre make, Dre may, Drake, <laughs> he, I've got Henry now on my, um, yeah, I'm just going to move on. Um, <laughs> Don't ever say that. <laughs> Um, I don't, I'm gonna go Bo Nix here. I think most of the NFL would take Drake May, but I think Sean Payton would take Bo Nix. So I think the I think Drake May is gonna win this though. I think the people are gonna vote. So vote on our championship over at DNVR underscore Broncos on Twitter X, and we will see who the we final will. winner is. Uh, You're crying again. Yes. It'll be yeah. We made Todd, or Todd cry twice today. I just oh, got I a message from our higher ups that Henry's gonna have a random drug test after today's show. Wow. Uh, we don't know why. What's going it's on, just this damn Celsius. It's that so actually strong. might be encouraged here. So, actually, yeah, yeah I, might so think, I, think, <laughs> I think I might get fired for not for, for not, not having anything in my blood or piss actually, or whatever. I think it is the Celsius. It's crazy. He came mm-hmm. in here for the first time today without black coffee, and uh, the Celsius is so strong. He came They're in crazy. with the Celsius, uh-huh, and. Uh, yeah, no. Henry, Henry actually thinks Celsius's are are actually very healthy for you. I didn't. Say, no, he oh, spins my much word. What he said no, before. it was like, why why did I get this instead of one of the free Red Bulls we have here? I was like, it's only two dollars, and I I'm not drinking a Red Bull in the morning. And this like, I know the Red Bull's terrible for you. <laughs> this might not be terrible. Like there might be some perks at least. Mm-hmm. And science says there are some perks. It really does help. This is not an ad, by the way. <laughs> but burn some body fat. It accelerates metabolism. It gives you plenty of energy. He thinks obviously. he's losing weight. This is the gym session that uh-huh, he went this to this morning. <laughs> he drinks no, this is the shower. Yeah. No, 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 no. Today was oh rough. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's not healthy. I know it's not healthy. It's 200 oh, milligrams of caffeine, good. though, and that gets you going. 200? Yeah, I can tell it gets yeah. you going. Yeah, I still got another 70 or so to go. Wow, yeah. wow. Okay, and we. Uh, have some super chats to hit really quick before we get out of here hit us with a thumbs up if you're tuning in and chiming in on the toyota chat we really appreciate everyone tuning in this has been a blast of a show and let's get to these super chats first one coming in for here we go d for stanky hanky and the gang so down for stanky hanky and the gang says what keeps michael Penix jr from being carson strong 2.0 oh boy carson um, strong no longer in the nfl Yes, that's the Nevada quarterback. Yeah. Um, Carson Strong, let's see. It's similar in that he was a pure pocket passer. Very big guy. Um, statuesque, some might say. Uh, big arm, pretty accurate. I would say not nearly as accurate as Michael Penix Jr. Um, I would say not nearly as efficient. I think I like Penix across the field more um, than Carson Strong. Without going back and looking at the numbers... I'm nervous to say that he was actually statistically like completing more of his passes, although I'd imagine that's the case. Um, you can get into like the other stuff, 446, 40 yard dash, Carson Strong certainly didn't do that. Um, yeah, I mean, some similarities there for sure in that they're both pocket passers. Um, I think the, the Penix production back to back years at the 4,500 yards, we've gone over that. Like it's just the volume, he's proven it over and over again. Um, but could he be Carson strong? Yeah. Like it's possible. Could Carson strong have panned out to be a much better quarterback? He also could have. Yeah. I think they're very different. Mm. I think the productivity that Michael Penix jr. Has had is insane. I mean, it's, it's Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, not just S, but it's literally, those are like the only two guys who have done 4,500 passing yards in back-to-back seasons in college. So it's amazing company. And it also seems like Michael Penix has all of the off field, um, and all of the mentals at this game. PFF put out a stat today that the top two quarterbacks in college for PFF grades after they go past their first read, you know who they are? Uh, Michael Penix Jr. Yep. and 
Jaden Daniels. Nope. Dang. You got one of them. Uh, he's a high draft. Let's say it's too? good company. Oh, uh, Patrick Mahomes. No, no. Oh. Uh, college this past year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. There you Caleb go. Williams. Caleb Williams. Mm, yep. uh, Caleb Williams. That's a good one. And Michael Penix Jr. And how crucial is it to progress through your reads mm -hmm. and then be elite once you progress through your first read? That is huge. Um, and I don't know what Carson Strong's numbers were, but I know those guys are, are very different. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why Penix isn't getting more love. I think the Broncos may be trying to pull something out. I think they want to keep him under the radar as much as yeah. possible. I, I think th they know. I think, I think they know. I think it they seems know. like there's – because you just hear reports whenever, like, I don't know, our guy James who's around a lot. James, like he said on the podcast, you just call up some, like, scout or whoever, wherever, just be like, hey, what do you think of this guy? It's like, oh, we think he's awesome. And and so you wind up with, like, all these quarterbacks. There's a couple people saying he's awesome. And when you don't hear a lot of that about Michael Penix Jr. and you don't hear much out of the Broncos, it's like, hmm, could you connect those dots? And you'd be hearing the same things from them. Like, that's a little bit of, like, a conspiracy theory almost, which I don't love. But I do think that he would fit the Broncos well. And it seems like I, the 12th pick seems like the perfect spot for him at this point. Mm-hmm. Seems like that might be where he's going. Yep. Broncos at 12, maybe uh, the Vikings at 11, maybe the Raiders at 13. It does yep. seem like he's kind of fitting right in. in. There. Like, there's no more second round talks with him. Some teams it's might rare. have a second round grade on him, but he's not falling to the second round because I think there's too many teams with mm -hmm. the higher grade on him. And before we get out of here, want to give a big shout out to our friend um, Roman and Alec, who are listening with us and rocking and rolling with us from the Springs. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate you guys tuning in with us when you drive around the Springs. We love you, and we thank everyone for tuning in with us today. What? I just, I mean, I like the pause, and then you go with Roman, the last name. <laughs> Do you know what that first name is? Um, It's... uh, Bjorn? Yeah. Bjorn. Bjorn. Yeah, See, that's right. Like, no. Bjorn. Bjorn. Yeah. I went with Mr. Roman. You did. So <laughs> which is, which works Bjorn, too. Shout Roman, out to Bjorn. And yeah. Elec for that tuning in fun. Yeah. with us. We really appreciate it. Big super chat too. Thank you. And thank you for the work that you do, Mr. Roman. Yeah. And uh, Alec for tuning in with us <laughs> yes. as well. All right. We will see you tomorrow on the DNVR Broncos podcast. We've got another fun show lined up. <laughs> Y'all city like the mayor.